What's up guys, it's me, Grey Wolf, back to do another video for you. Uh, this video is just going to be a quick video, um, basically about the types of cameras and the video editing software that I use. Um, I've gotten quite a few questions about that. Um, so that this video is probably not going to be very long. But, um, so I started out, if you've... If you check out my older videos, I started out using just a crappy, uh, non-high-def webcam, is all it was. I can't think of the exact model number. I want to say it was a Microsoft uh, VX5000, something like that. Um, really crappy camera. I mean, you know, you know it's okay for... Or webcam chat or whatever but for filming videos it was pretty crappy but that was all I had at first um, anyway then I eventually uh, upgraded that webcam to the Logitech C920 which is a high def it's a full 1080p uh, webcam uh, with uh, dual you know stereo microphone inputs which is pretty cool and it does a pretty good job there's just a couple complaints that I have about it it's currently the camera that I use for filming uh, overhead stuff uh, I use a different camera uh, for filming stuff like what I'm, what I'm doing right now I'm using a completely different cam a camera and I'll get to that in a minute but the uh, the C920 there's basically a couple of things that bug the crap out of me about that camera uh, it films nice and it looks pretty nice but um, probably my biggest gripe with it is it doesn't focus up close very well it has the capability supposedly according to the specs of focusing uh, with focusing in within like something like 10 to, to 20 millimeters um, and it will but Sometimes it's it takes me a very long time to get it to focus. It wants to keep the focus range more outward, and then whatever it is that I'm holding up close to the camera is blurred. Now, if I dick with it long enough, you know I can get it to I can get it to focus in and do what I need to do. But then, not only does that consume time, but uh, in filming, but then I have to it consumes more time when I go back to edit the video because it, you know if it. If I spend four, you know, th two, three, four, five minutes, however long it is, trying to get the thing to focus in so you can see it, well, I got to edit out all the dead air. So uh, that's that's probably my major gripe about it. Uh, the only other complaint that I have with it would probably be the fact that if you're filming in 1080p with it, you can't zoom in, which is I don't know. I guess it's some kind of limitation of the camera or whatever. I have to, if I need to zoom in on something, like if I'm working on something small or I really want to show up close detail when I'm in, from overhead, because uh, the Logitech, if I didn't just say that already, the Logitech is the one that I now use the film overhead with. Um, if I want to show something up close in detail, I have to switch to 720p, at which point I get maybe four zoom levels um, which is usually sufficient uh, you can actually get more zoom levels if you dumb it down even more than that and you drop it below high def quality but typically I don't have to uh, in fact I don't think I've ever had to I think 720p I can usually get what I want to get across even if I have to pick up the item and hold it up in the air you know right in front of the camera or whatever but uh, so anyway, you know, it serves its purpose. That camera was about a hundred bucks. The first one I started out with was a, was a fifty dollar webcam. Uh, this Logitech C920 at the time I bought it was around a hundred. Um, then when I wanted to switch to doing to being able to do an overhead view and the front view, then uh, I actually went out and bought a high def. Uh, camcorder is what I use for doing exactly what I'm doing now. I'm filming straight on, and um, 
the model number on that one is a Panasonic HC-V500. And uh, I believe those are normally 250 or 300 bucks. I got mine on sale for Black uh, on Black Friday for uh, 200 dollars. Um, all in all, I'm really happy with that camera. The only thing that uh, the only thing that I'm not too happy about is the battery life. The battery life is terrible. It lasts about 45 minutes, um, but that's you know that's not a big deal. Um, my videos don't really, don't typically last longer than 20 or 30 minutes anyway. Uh, at the at the very most, I usually don't go over that too much. And if I do, I do it in parts. And I was able to get on eBay and actually order a, um, uh, a an, I ordered another battery and a standalone charger for that battery for relatively cheap. Uh, granted, they're not Panasonic brand. They are you know some kind of Chinese clone brands or whatever but they they work just fine and in fact the milliamp rating on the Chinese clone battery is higher than the than the stock battery and uh, and well but only by a couple hundred milliamps and I can't really tell the difference they both last about the same amount of time but since I have the two batteries and I can charge one while I'm using the other one it hasn't really been that big of an issue um, so that's fine. Uh, I love using this camera because it will zoom, you know, up close really easily. If I put something up in front of, you know, the camera, you know, it zooms in on it really easy, picks it up. Um, I like it too because it has uh, uh, stability uh, stuff built into the camera. Whereas if I'm, you know, if I'm actually holding it in my hand and trying to show you something, then um, you know, you don't get all that, that shake and stuff in it. Uh, I mean, to a degree you do, but it cuts a lot of that out uh, compared to, like, say, my old point-and-shoot that I used to use for jobs like that. And you can tell because it's just shaky as, as all get out. So that goes over the cameras that I use. Now, let me tell you a little something that I learned about video editing software. Uh, video editing software I used I started out using AVS a lot of people use AVS it seems to be a, a very popular uh, video editing program to use however I discovered that it's garbage I mean it, it really is garbage um, it's fine for simple tasks if you have one video especially if it's not HD and you're just doing a couple of little things, you know, cropping this out, cropping that out, maybe putting a little intro in there, maybe doing a transition or two, it's fine. But uh, I discovered just how bad of a program it really is. <laughs> when I started going to using uh, the two different camera angles, I basically I use this one as I use this camera here that I'm shooting with now as my main um, my main video in the uh, editor and then I use the overhead view as an overlay and then I just crop out the parts of the overlay that I don't want you know I add in the fade in fade out transitions things like that when you start working with multiple uh, videos, especially multiple high def videos in AVS, AVS literally just shits the bed. I mean, it, it cannot handle it. And I learned this the hard way. Um, you know, everybody kept telling me that AVS was, was, was a really good program to use and, you know, blah, 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 all this. Um, I knew quite a few people using it. So, you know, why wouldn't I use it, right? So I'm sitting there thinking, well, you know, this thing keeps crashing when I'm trying to do these multiple high-def videos or whatever. And the conclusion that I came to was that my computer wasn't up to snuff. Uh, you know, my computer wasn't old, but it wasn't exactly new either. It was a, you know, it was a little bit older dual-core system, 4 gigs of memory. Uh, you know, I think at that time I was running on a, a NVIDIA 8800 GT video card. Uh, which which was fine because I pretty much stopped gaming. I, as soon as I got into RCs a few years ago, uh, I quit gaming. 
for the most part. So uh, hadn't really had enough, hadn't really had a reason to upgrade my system. So all of this started happening with ABS. So I'm sitting there thinking, well, man, you know, this this is just really uh, computer intensive, you know. So I went out, got myself a new egg credit card, and built a $1,600 computer. This thing is beast mode. Now I'm an IT guy by profession, so um, it really wasn't a big deal. I mean, it kind of was a big deal, but it wasn't a, a terrible uh, thing to find out that all of the overkill that I did on that computer the, the gigantic graphics card, you know, the giant power supply, the, the you know, the high-end motherboard, you know, the, the, the 16 gigs of, of uh, 1866 overclocked RAM, you know, the six core, uh, you know, black edition unlocked processor, AMD processor, um, uh, you know, just all that stuff, the two solid state hard drives that I put in it, the, uh, you know, the, the one terabyte hard drive that I, or, yeah, the one terabyte standard SATA hard drive that I put into it, you know, all the money that I spent on the case and the, the cooler so I could overclock everything and just make this thing just, you know, an ultimate just beast of a computer to handle this video editing, right? Still had the same problem. So you can imagine I was a little upset when I found out that I just built a $1,600 computer for basically for nothing now like I said now since I'm an IT guy I didn't mind it all that much because you know I like having a really nice computer anyway and I do a lot of IT related stuff at home so it's not a total loss but I definitely did not need half that much machine uh, so anyway did some research on the internet once I figured out that it was the program that was the problem I did some research on the internet, and what I came up with was um, one of the one of the most highly recommended programs I could find out there was CyberLink's uh, Power Director 11 Ultra. Uh, you can actually buy a legit copy um, if you have the IT skills. You can you can get a hacked copy as well. I went ahead and bought a legit copy because I use it so much. Um, you can actually get a legit copy for forty bucks. Normally, it sells for a hundred. Uh, the the forty dollar copy though is a digital download. It's not you don't get the disc or the box or anything. Uh, it's from eCrater, and if you go to eCrater and you're looking at buying it, the guys only got about seventy five percent positive feedback. But you can pay with PayPal. So I was a little iffy on buying it, but I figured you know what, since I can pay with PayPal, I have PayPal buyer protection. Worst case scenario, if I don't get my product, I can get my money back in 45 days. And so I went there, I bought the program, uh, didn't hear from the guy for like 24 hours. I, after about 24 hours, I sent him an email and I'm, just, I'm like, hey dude, you know, here's my order number. I ordered this program. Where is it? You know, why haven't I received it yet? I haven't gotten anything. I did get a confirmation email for the purchase, but other than that, I hadn't, I hadn't received any communication from him whatsoever or whatever. Well, within 24 hours of sending that email, I actually did get a response from him, and uh, I did get the link to download it. I got a legit CD key, the whole nine yards, so I, that I, that I, am, I am running that one currently, and it's amazing. It really is, it, especially, well, at least on, on my system that I have now, it's just super fast. I can load the videos up, and they really just... Yeah, I mean, I can put both, you know, I can load everything into the library and then just drag and drop it into, you know, wherever I want it in the uh, timeline and then just start playing it. And it, uh, there are, you, you know, if you get, if you get to editing, editing a specific area really heavily, yeah, it might not play completely smooth until you actually produce it, but it plays, it plays smooth enough to, to get you where you want to be so at any rate if you're looking for for good uh, video editing software pirated or or legal definitely check out power director 11 ultra uh, it's a good program little 
there's a, there was it took me a little bit of time to transition from AVS to that one because there's certain functions in it that don't work anything like AVS so I had to kind of learn the program again uh, doesn't have quite as many uh, templates in terms of text um, it has a lot of different video effects and and um, and transitions but text not so much but I like to I, I create most of my own text templates anyway so that that wasn't a huge deal and I'm assuming that if I went to their website I could probably find packs to download uh, to give me more but at any rate so that's my uh, rundown on what I use for video equipment and video editing software um, if you want to see pics of of my RCs or even the computer that I used that I that I built to to do video editing you can check those out on Facebook that's www.facebook.com forward slash gray wolf studios 74 uh, you can leave me questions and comments there as well or you can also email me at graywolfstudios74 at gmail.com. Peace.